All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this professional learning opportunity. Today's session is Understanding Some Roles of Priests in Parish Schools. My name is Laura MacDonald, and I will be helping to facilitate this webinar today. Just a few housekeeping notes. As you probably noticed, we are recording the session, number one. If you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to use the Q&A box. You'll find that at the bottom of your screen. You can type in your questions and we will get to them just as soon as we can. At the end of this session, if you're looking for um, verification of participation, please complete the survey. After you complete the survey, you will get a certificate of completion for this session. And we really like your feedback. So please take a moment to do that. It's, it's very short. So today's presenter is Father Tom. He's the Director of Secondary Engagement here at NCEA and my colleague. Um, before coming to NCEA, he taught. He was a teacher and at the Teacher Leader Presentation Program at Creighton University. And he taught for over a decade uh, as a high school board member, administrator, and teacher. He is a writer for NCEA, so you might have a book by Father Tom, and he regularly contributes to the NCEA Momentum magazine since 2014. Um, so Father Tom, he enjoys kayaking, the symphony, and being outdoors, and he lives in the Jesuit com community in Little Italy section of Chicago. So Father Tom, they're all yours. Okay, thanks, Laura. Welcome, everybody. Um, as Laura mentioned today, we're going to talk about the role of priests in parish schools. Um, last um, January 9th, we did the first part of this webinar, so it's broken into two parts, and you can watch the first part on our website, nca.org. Um, it'll be an on-demand webinar from the first part, so today we're going to do the second part. The first part was focused on um, how the school leader, the pastor, and parents can work together um, to collaborate around formation of students in schools. And we're going to continue that theme today. But today we're going to talk specifically about how the pastor in a parish school can work with the school leader and the parents in that kind of collaboration and that covenant model. So Catholic schools have a dual purpose. Um, I think we can say that the public school, um, at least as it was originally conceived, the dual purpose of the public school was um, to prepare young people to be um, contributing adults in their community and to be good citizens. Citizenship was really a big emphasis in public schools. Um, in the 1800s and 1900s, especially with a lot of immigrants coming in and going to public schools. Um, Catholic schools have always focused on that as well, um, preparing students for their adult roles and preparing them to be good citizens. We kind of put that all into one piece or one bucket, which is preparing youth for uh, their role in, as adults. And then the other part of a Catholic school is to prepare students to be leaders in their parish, um, leaders in the church, and ultimately to live a life with God forever. I'm just going to read one paragraph from To Teach As Jesus Did, which I think is, a. there's a lot of publications, church publications on the purpose of Catholic schools out there, and To Teach As Jesus Did was published in 1972, um, right after the Vatican Council, as the United States kind of way to appropriate what the Vatican Council said about Catholic schools, and even though it was published in 72, and I think the most recent version might be 1973, uh, still a, just like a really excellent um, overview of the purpose of Catholic school. So I just want to read one paragraph from To Teach As Jesus Did, which focuses on this dual purpose of Catholic education's paragraph seven. Catholic education is an expression of the mission entrusted by Jesus to the church he founded. Through education, the church seeks to prepare its members to proclaim the good news and to translate this proclamation into action. The Christian vocation is a call to transform oneself and society with God's help. The educational efforts of the church must encompass the twin purposes of personal sanctification 
and social reform in light of Christian values. So they talk about it in terms of personal sanctification and social reform. Here on the slide, I have to prepare youth for this life and the life to come. There's different ways to talk about it, but Catholic schools have a dual purpose. Um, and so when we think about pastors and parishes, uh, they're going to be real interested in this dual purpose, especially how we prepare youth for life to come or how we get youth involved in the parish, how we get youth um, interested in living their faith. So not all pastors, not all priests um, have an educational background, but they all obviously uh, are prepared to help people in their faith journey. And so when we talk about the leader of the school working with the pastor of the parish and with families, it's really going to focus on that faith formation piece. And when you think about being able to pass on that dual purpose in your school to your students, you want to have key leaders in your school that understand this dual purpose. They know what it is and they understand how to tell others about it. And so I suggest that you have at least three of these key leaders to account for any possible changes that might happen in your school over time, like somebody leaving or whatever. Um, so the principal and a couple other people um, could be these school leaders that you would um, make sure that they are, they receive some professional development around what their school purpose is and that they are able to share that with other people. So here I have some examples of who those school, who those key school leaders might be. Um, this would be more focused at the elementary school level where you might not have an assistant principal. High school, you might have an assistant principal, but at a grade school, you probably have the grade level coordinator or mid-career teachers. Um, there aren't too many Catholic high schools that are parish-based anymore, but if you have a parish-based high school or a pastor is involved in that as the leader of the of the mission of that parish, then you know you might have an assistant principal. If you have a bigger grade school, you might have an assistant principal. But these are some other key leaders that could all be trained in collaboration with the parish pastor around this dual purpose and to help the, and to give the pastor the opportunity um, to do some professional development with the principal and with the other teachers as appropriate around you know, faith formation, the purpose of a Catholic school and things like that can be really valuable to kind of create that covenant. Like we're all on the same page. We're all on the same team. We're all working together to educate students with this dual purpose uh, for their role as adults and also their role as Christians. So I like to think about it in terms of covenant. Um, think about Abraham and Sarah. When I think about covenant, they kind of come to mind. Um, they left their homeland. God asked them to go to a new place without, they didn't really know exactly what's going to happen. There was a lot of unknowns, but they trusted God and, and God trusted them. And that covenant relationship is always a two-way relationship where each party in the covenant has some um, obligations to maintain and they also give and take with each other. And so we think about the school, the parish, and the family in terms of a covenant relationship then we need to get ready for that covenant relationship. We need to have some formation around it. So Abraham and Sarah, if you think about the Old Testament story, um, sometimes it didn't always go smoothly. Um, they made some mistakes. God chastised them a couple of times. A couple of times, Abraham and Sarah would be like talking to God, like, what's going on? I mean, you're asking me to do these things. You're not giving me any information. How's this all going to work out? I have a lot of questions. So there was this back and forth between Abraham and Sarah and God that had revealed himself to them. But they stuck it out and they remained in that covenant relationship. So if we think about that covenant relationship in Catholic schools as a way to, to work together, leader of the school, leaders of the school that I mentioned, those three people that you might identify, and then the pastor and the family, um, these are some ways you could engage in covenant formation where you could like prepare yourself. Um, you could like um, engage your heart and your emotions and your mind in order to develop that deeper commitment that's necessary for a covenant so that you can maintain that covenant through difficult times. So the book I just read from to teach as Jesus did, again, I think it's a really excellent book. It's available for purchase on the, United States Conference of Catholic Bishops website. It's also available on Amazon. 
Um, the Gothic School on the Threshold of the Third Millennium, which is another really good document, which discusses the purpose of Catholic schools in light of current context. Um, that's available for free on the Vatican website. And I have those websites there. You can look at those. Um, and if you need to, you know, grab those websites again, this uh, webinar, along with the slides, will be available as an on-demand webinar up on our website. So you can always go back and look at it later if you need to. Another um, way that you can um, engage in professional development for covenant formation is professional development with accountability. So professional development um, is more than just going to the conference or doing the webinar or reading the book. It's engaging in those very important activities, but then bringing something back and actually being able to demonstrate to the person who paid your way, so to speak, or gave you permission to go or supported you to go, hey, here's what I brought back and here's how I'm gonna use it. Um, in terms of accountability, you can see on the slide there, there's different certificates you can get either through colleges and universities or through NCEA. You can get a certificate today, for example, for participating in this webinar. And Laura will tell you about that at the end. Um, I just want to show you one thing on our website. Our corporate partners have a new collective where they share things. So, so I'm just going to end my slide show just briefly and show you on the website. Um, so if you go to our website, nca.org, and you go up to how we serve, and then you'll see NCEA Collective, you just click on that. It'll bring you here. And we have some things posted um, right here. We have the role of the priest in today's Catholic school. So you could click on that and learn more related to the topic that we're talking about. But we also have our... Um, corporate sponsor collective here. And so each of these corporate sponsors has information and resources here, Archangel, Fax, Sadly, or Blackbot that you can use. And uh, eventually our other corporate sponsors will also have links here and resources that you can access. And so this would be a good place to go uh, to follow up on this webinar, but also for other ideas and information that you might want um, about what you're doing in your Catholic school. So I'm gonna restart my slideshow now. So I do, that just gives you another place to go for professional development um, resources that you want to have. Continuous improvement in a covenant model. Um, of course, the first step in continuous improvement is always to obtain data, kind of, kind of a baseline of where you are. So how many of you are, do you have three teachers that are engaged in some sort of formation to learn the dual purpose of Catholic education? and to enter into a covenant relationship with the pastor and with parents. Um, how well do your students know the Catholic faith? How well do your families know it? Do they practice? And all those sorts of questions. So one way to obtain data is just through informal polling. And so your pastor of your school, for example, could visit your school periodically, um, just informally visit classrooms, talk with students, talk with teachers, and ask them, you know, how would you articulate the mission of the school? How do you see yourself sharing the Catholic faith with your students? Uh, and you wanna have people know ahead of time, you wanna be transparent that the pastor is gonna come and ask these questions uh, for the purpose of gaining some information to help uh, inform the professional development program for the school. So, um, if teachers aren't able, for example, to articulate the mission of the school, they don't really understand it or they don't really know it or they can't verbalize it, that's a good starting place. So you always want to put this in the context of it's not neither good nor bad, whether teachers know it or don't know it. Um, it's a one benchmark. It's a baseline. Okay, teachers know the mission statement. They can tell me, they can recite it word for word, but they can't go much beyond that. And so then we would know where, where to start, who would need to start with. Okay, the mission statement, we know it, but now how do we take that next step and talk about how we uh, teach about it in our class or how we talk to our colleagues about it? And then you can do some more formal assessment as well. Um, NCA offers the RISE family of assessments um, to gain knowledge about your students, about staff, and about family practice of the faith. And if you're interested um, in using the RISE family of assessments, as a way to obtain data on 
uh, your faith formation ability of your faculty, staff, parents, pastor, things like that. Um, that same place where we are on the NCA website has a link where you can find out more about the RISE assessments. And then in the continuous improvement process in the model, after you obtain that data, whether it's formally or informally or both, then you want to look at that data and you want to discuss it with a, a group of stakeholders. So maybe the pastor, those three leaders in the school, maybe a few faculty members, maybe some students, maybe some parents. You want to all get together and look at all the data you have and say, what does that tell us? What does that data say to us about our knowledge around the dual purpose of Catholic education? What does it say to us about our covenant relationship? Um, are, do, are we in a covenant relationship? Do we need to do some more work around that? Are we committed to hanging together even in difficult times? So, for example, if you use the Rice Family of Assessments and you had student, students in the fifth grade do the assessment and you discovered that um, their knowledge and understanding of the mystery of the Eucharist um, as being the real true presence of Jesus was lacking, then you could say, okay, in, in the sixth and seventh grade religion classes, we're really going to emphasize that. And we're going to we're going to talk with students about what would be a helpful way to help you understand that in, in your own language, in your own context, using examples from your own experiences. How can you gain a greater understanding that what we receive in the Eucharist is true the body and blood of Christ? And I just use that example because um, the data shows that people in general, students, high school students, even uh, adults, have a difficult time understanding and articulating what it means to say that we believe in the true presence of Jesus. So that's one that, that you might well want to talk about in terms of how you change your instructional models, um, your content, things like that. And then you want to develop database plans for ongoing formation. So let's say your teachers did need to know more about how to teach effectively about the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist, then you could develop some professional development around that. You could have some learning modules, perhaps have some speakers come in, that sort of thing. Perhaps the pastor could get involved and help uh, talk about how you would prepare faculty to more effectively teach students about that mystery of our faith. So what's your next step? Um, we've talked about formation around the dual purpose of Catholic education. Uh, we've talked about creating a covenant relationship, which means a deep lasting relationship between the leaders of the school, the pastor of the parish and the families in the school and the parish. Um, how would you possibly need to adjust your school staff formation to engage in that level of you know, outcome to, to reach a covenant relationship between the school, the parish and parents? What do you need to do? What do you need to adjust? in order to make that happen. Um, you can also ask yourself, who are the key leaders in your school? If if you already have three key leaders or you have three key, three key leaders in mind, I'm like, yeah, if I was gonna do this, if I was gonna pursue the ideas that we're talking about today in this presentation, these are the three people that I would focus on. But maybe you need to think about that. Like who would those three key leaders be who would really uh, meet with the pastor and others to really start engaging in that deeper formation around the dual purpose of Catholic education and developing a covenant. And then uh, what would the resources be that you might use uh, to engage in that kind of professional development, books and programs? I gave you a lot of examples in the presentation today. Again, you can always go back and look at this slide and listen to me again. If you look at the on-demand webinar on nca.org, but I presented a lot of books and programs today, and of course there are many others out there that you could use um, for this professional development of faculty in your school, leaders in your school, talking with your pastor about it, talking with your parents about it. Um, and then finally, how can you use this continuous improvement model to enhance youth formation in your school? So these are your next steps, uh, four steps uh, based on today's presentation that I think it would be helpful to take as you think about how to begin this more this deeper level of covenant commitment between family, school, and parish. Um, here's some further reading resources. Um, this Priestly Leadership in Catholic Schools is a good book published by NCEA. 
it's reflections from some pastors of, of schools, uh, school pastors. I, I indicated some specific page numbers there that I thought would pertain specifically to what we're talking about today. And then a book that I co-authored with some of my colleagues at Creighton, Your School's Catholic Identity, Name It, Claim It, and Build on It, is a really good book. It's, it's designed to be a workshop and a book, so to help provide a lot more guidance and structure around some of the things we talked about today. How would you align your school around a mission that focuses on the dual purpose of Catholic education? Uh, and both of those um, resources are available through our NCA bookstore at nca.org. Okay, so that's my presentation for today. Thank you so much for joining it. Uh, remember, if you missed part one, you can look at that on our website in on-demand webinars. Well, thank you, Father Tom. So you have some homework. He gave you some next steps. I have one more step for you. Please fill out the survey. We read them. We use them to make our plans for future trainings. And it's a way for you to get that um, verification that you attended today um, with Father Tom. Um, so that link's dropped in the chat. You can click on it. Thank you for attending. And thank you, Father Tom. And I don't, I'm going to check real quick. I don't yeah. think we have any questions to address. So you were very thorough. And um, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. All right, see you later. Bye, everybody.